Welcome back everyone. I'm Zell and today we're going to try something new. I am going to uh, live stream kind of an overview of the best tech Shinka Sim. And this, uh, I, I know I said that I wasn't going to live stream reviews, but you know, guys, I really don't do reviews anymore like I used to. Most of them are overviews. Part of that is because of the number of knives that run through my desk. The other reason is uh, Seth and I have Todd Knife and Tool Knives coming out soon that, uh, well, since we have knives coming out soon, I really need to step back from being a hardcore review guy. doesn't mean we're not going to still do that, but, well, anyhow, let's get into the Shinka Sin. Shinka Sin, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Uh, they made this one pretty complicated. Get back over here and get to my, there we go. We got a closed length on this dude of 4.8 inches, a handle thickness of just over half an inch at 5.3, and all of my stuff just disappeared. Well, that is freaking wonderful. There we go. A closed height of 1.1, which is really cool with these knives. Whenever you do the front flipper design, you lose the flipper, and you have the opportunity to make a really, really thin knife when you're going spine to spine. Uh, what else we got here? We have an open overall length of 8.3, and it's a 3.5 inch blade. So let's get a look at the outside of it. And uh, you guys can ask questions, whatever, as we're going through this knife. That's why I'm doing it live, to see how this works out. Also, why we're doing it during the day, so we don't have like 50 or 100 people in here. And uh, we can kind of sort things out. So, getting a look at it from the outside, we've got, you know, it's titanium. We've got the newer pivot that Best Tech's using. It's not my favorite. I kind of wish it was a flatter pivot. But this, it isn't too bad here where we have this collar around it and they've set it in. So, I'm, I'm kind of liking that. And we've got our carbon fiber inlay. Now, this is not deep inlay like you would see on some of the other brands out there. This is... Uh, set in and then screwed in place. There are ridges on either side of it. Nothing that's going to get caught on anything, but it's not like perfect inlay like you would see with some other things or some other brands. And it's also put in with mechanical fasteners, screws. And that we'll talk about a little later, but uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing. We've got some lines here and we've got a uh, Backspacer, got some nice cuts in the backspacer. Looks like, you know, they've been doing a little Todd Knife and Tool stuff in that backspacer, which kind of cool. I like to see that. And we have a tip up right hand only pocket clip. We have a lanyard hole that is going through everything. Are they going to be priced near real steel or boost blades? Okay, we'll get to the price here in just a second. It's designed by Best Tech and the price, guys, MSRP of $250 and uh, actual street price over Blade HQ right now is $199. So they have priced themselves right in with Boost Blades and some of the others. But this is a larger knife at 4.8 inches long, 4 millimeter blade stock, and uh, just bigger knife for guys with bigger hands. So let's uh, get our blade out here and we'll lay her down and uh, we'll do a little comparison and we'll do some stuff that's uh, upcoming here. I think you can order these now. That is a M1 from Reich. I don't know if they come in that color or not. This is a prototype. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, this will be fun. There's our... Uh, malware from Todd Knife and Tool upcoming later this year. There's an eraser from Leong Ma. And, you know, we will go ahead and do our normal stuff there. There's a Delica, so it's a little bigger than a Delica. And, oh, picked up the wrong orange knife. There's our Rat Model 1 and our Buck 110. And moving on along, let's get a look at this blade because, you know, they've given us a drop point blade and it's a really nice drop point blade. We've got our 
kind of almost looks hand rubbed right in there. It's not really that's a machine finish. And it does look like we have a blast finish here. Not a huge fan of that, but it says 35VN. It shouldn't give you too many problems unless you live in a really bad place. Good morning, Edward. How are you doing? Uh, where are we at? We're looking at the blade. S35VN. It is, and that is part of the stuff that disappeared on my screen a minute ago. Let's see if we can find it. I don't know what happened with my stuff here. Uh, there it is. We have an ed it's a blade length of just over three and a half inches and an edge length of 3.24 with four millimeter uh, blade stock. And yes, Edward, I am doing well. Thank you. Uh, we got a weight of 4.2 ounces and a grip length of 3.8. And I measured about halfway through right here. Ah, good morning, Jack the Farm Boy. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, because I kind I don't always consider this grip length. Remember, we got this kick back here. But uh, that is what you get with the final measurements there. Action-wise, this guy is... Uh, Whenever it first showed up, and this was a new knife whenever it showed up, uh, the U.S. Best Tech reps sent it up here, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was not great. However, I have tried to train myself on this front flipping thing with the bigger knife, and uh, it's gotten a lot better, or I've gotten a lot better, one of the two. You know, it will flip pretty darn good. And I suppose we should talk about the internals, right? Well, this is what's becoming the norm. Ceramic ball bearing, ceramic detent. We have a lock bar insert with over travel stop. Uh, we've got a little more lock up than you'll see on a lot of other brands, which is not a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. That was probably at what, 40% guys, something like that. Uh, I like that. And since we're into the mechanical things, I do want to talk about these two screws. These two screws are kind of an eyesore in my opinion. I understand why they do it, and I like that it's mechanical holding that piece of uh, carbon fiber in. But, no, I don't feist. Sorry, I did not care for that knife at all. That's what uh, PB... Picket ask, and I don't have a feist on the table, just I've never cared for that knife at all. Uh, anyhow, what I do wish they would do is I wish that they would, instead of using these regular button top screws, I wish they would use a countersunk screw. And by using that countersunk screw, uh, also use them and make them a titanium so that they can anodize them and sink them. That's what I would like to see. Uh, whenever they do the inlay like this, it would just give it that extra touch of awesomeness. And I'm doing a lot of talking. There's the action. I mean, the action on this guy, I, it's near perfect, guys. It's got that very smooth, controlled close whenever the lock bar has its tension down on there. And no lock bar tension, it just drops. So very good action. And uh, ergonomics, that's something we always have to talk about. And you guys know me, this one is going to get top marks because, well, there you go. It's there. It's easy. Uh, and nothing bad here. Fits in the hand well. You can get a hold of it any way you need to, of course. And only mark I'm going to give it, and this really isn't ergonomics, but because it's a front flipper, our flipper is sticking out here, so whenever you've got it open, you have very little keeping you from running your hand up on the blade if you need to perforate something. So if you need to make a move like that, uh, you're kind of short on stops for your fingers. That's kind of a bum deal in my opinion, but I understand why some people really, really like it. Yeah, and don't mark the action on me. I am awful at flipping these front flippers. And good morning, Keeper. How you doing? 
And, you know, guys, if I were, uh, we're down to getting near the end, what would Zell do different? And I will get the pocket out here in just a minute. Now, well, we'll go ahead and do that. Whoa, hit the camera, and now it's going all over the place. Not awake yet, man. Come on. Where are you at? You know, if you're in the Midwest, you're better. It's time to be awake. There you go in the pocket. We've got the uh, hole sticking out there just a little bit for the uh, lanyard. And it doesn't have any weirdness, so it should carry pretty good. I have not carried this guy. I'll be straight up and honest with you. That's why this is kind of an overview and not a full review. Uh, it's a knife. It'll probably go into the pass rounds for everyone, and I didn't want to be the one to mess it up, especially because I'm not much of a front flipper guy. All right, already on lunch break. Well, dude, come on. It's time to wake up, get some coffee. You know, I'm down here in Missouri. I'm finishing my uh, second cup of coffee. Already did one live stream over on Instagram, and now we're here live streaming this one. And we are down to what would Zell do different. And if you guys have questions about this knife, get them in there because I'm not going to let this live stream run real long because uh, it's you know going to be up there on <laughs> three cups in here. All right, Jax. Uh, Jax, uh, he's all hopped up on caffeine this morning uh, because you know this will be static on the channel as kind of a overview of the knife. I don't want it to get real long. But what would I do different? Well, one, I would flatten out this. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. And it's mostly because of the look, but it would be nice if it was a little flatter against. Uh, cash me up, knife price. This is the best tech. Oh, let's see if I can pronounce this again. You guys are making me pronounce this thing. Shinka Sin. And... Uh, its price is $199. Uh, I'll get a look at that 0470. I don't know if I'll have one or not. Uh, it just kind of depends. Finger choil on the blade would help this knife a lot, but this is not a finger choil. Not at all. Uh, things I would change, those screws that we talked about just a minute ago, yes, I would put some countersunk screws in there in titanium, anodize them a bronze or something so that they match up better with the knife and with the carbon fiber. Uh, other things, I, it's a pretty simple design. I would probably go ahead and set up this pocket clip where I could put it on both sides of the knife. That way, you know, you get uh, the left and right hand carry out of it. And, you know, that's really about it for the things I would change because my other deal here with this guard, you know, you can't really do much about that. Uh, you know, Daniel, I don't know. I, I, I am not a huge fan of the front flipper. You can tell from the designs that Seth and I do, we don't do front flipping. Uh, we have one with a uh, flipper that's kind of... Uh, and I don't have one of his knives up here, but, uh, oh, I can't think of, I know him real well, and I can't think of the designer's name. Uh, we have some that have got the small flipper tabs, but I, a, front, a true front flipper like this, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people like them, though, and, they, and that's cool. Now, the one thing I wish this one would do, and my hands either don't know how to do it right or something, is uh, some of, I think it's the boost, you can get over the top like this and pull it. And I like that. I'm not so much on uh, this method. Metamorph. Yeah, you can do that with that little guy too. Uh, this one is kind of, you'd have to have really long fingers. Oh, okay, Edward, let's see here. That is... The uh, malware, that's a production prototype. From what I understand from Best Tech, they are in production now, and they should be available sometime November, December time frame. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I have any other thawed knife and tool knives up here or not. I don't think I do. I think I put them all up from this morning. Oh, actually, I do. We'll 
put that out too. That is the RISD prototype. That's one Seth and I made. <laughs> Understand, Keeper. Thanks, Edward. I appreciate it. Uh, it is one of our favorites, and you know the business end of this guy. I don't know how to get it up there to the camera, but uh, this was a fun knife to design. It was designed to be kind of that stabby thing. And, uh, you know, it'll make a good EDC knife, but uh, it, it's really designed for perforating things <laughs> just because it was fun. Uh, this is more your EDC knife, and uh, we don't have any production deals on that one yet, but, you know, we'll see how things go. And, guys, uh, I would like to hang out with you, but we're already at 15 minutes on this, and I want to keep this one for a regular video for an overview of this knife. So we're going to cut it right here. If you've got any questions, get to typing. I'll give it another minute or so before we cut off. Uh, and we can, while we're doing that, we can throw up some other things that have come across new. There is an Aquila from uh, Savivi. There is the best tech. I can't remember the name of that little guy, but I really, really like it. And, uh, what, oh. Here is the Warthog, and there's our uh, eraser from Leong Ma. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that little bell button so that whenever we do these live streams, you'll get a notification because, guys, I really think we're going to be doing more live streams. It's a lot more fun for me, and it's... Uh, well, just to be quite honest, it's easier to do if I can find the quiet time to do it and loads more fun to interact with you guys. Everyone have a great day. And Jack, you will like this Aquila wherever I put that guy. Uh, that is going to be a good one for Savivi. You will be glad you ordered that guy. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you next time.